Did that flattening yield curve really augur that the Fed needed to do something? Nobody is better to answer that question than Jerome Schneider. I'd like to welcome a managing director of PIMCO. Jerome, thank you for joining me today. Let's get right into it. Many believe that the flattening that accelerated towards the end of November was a big loud scream for the markets to the Federal Reserve that you need to pay more attention to inflation. Do you agree with that? Well, it really was the wild scream to the markets was the data, honestly, Rick. And while the uh, Fed is obviously very poised to be aware of what goes on in the markets and the market pricing, you even still today have a pretty large discrepancy of what the Fed is expecting to project in terms of uh, the Fed sequencing of rate, potential rate hikes versus what the market is actually pricing. And in fact, the Fed is actually slightly more aggressive in that context uh, than the Fed is, especially when you look out two to three years. I think ultimately what we are beginning to see is two things. One, that the communication that the Fed has really laid out, being so actually pretty successful and eloquent, has really led us to have a policy change, a shift in policy, to move toward a road of normalcy, get back to that neutral rate over the course of the next few years. And the communication has been quite effective in terms of placating the market. Sure, you can absolutely look on the day-in, day-out. Wait, 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 Jerome, look, Please. Jerome, Jerome, let me stop you a minute. If the taper goes as scheduled, the, the quick and pace, the, the, the earliest the Fed could raise rates would be the end of March. So that's the earliest. That's three and a half months. A lot can happen in three and a half months. Okay? Uh, communications aside, uh, if the economy continues or the equities continue to have agita, uh, I am sure the probabilities and the amount of rate increases will most likely be a lot less. So what we're looking at is rate increases to deal with inflation versus damage to stocks in the economy. Speak to that. Well, absolutely. You know, the Fed is actually going to pay attention to these volatility. And I think anybody should be expecting at this point in time that with the remo removal of QE and monetary policy, that there should be probably some additional risk premium in the market. And that ultimately means to changing liquidity conditions a little bit poor, some potential volatility. And that's why we've been advising clients to really be paying attention to the liquidity transmission mechanisms, i.e. there's higher cost to transact. To your point, though, the Fed's going to be continued, continually observant and vigilant in this regard. They're going to find that there has been optionality in the past. They've shifted their policy, and Jerome Powell is quite successful in doing that. But let's look at the facts here, uh, Rick. When we look at the credit markets, they've been remarkably stable. And while equity markets have had hourly and, and daily basis over the past few sessions well, but, but of a little bit of a Remarkably stable, though, Jerome. Jerome, remarkably stable. Here we have inflation that we haven't seen literally in certain amounts since the 80s and certain areas since the 70s. And while all that's going on, we're at a 1.4 on 10-year. Uh, right. The curve has flattened, but long rates haven't responded. Don't you think that's a bit odd? That is what the water cooler conversations are. Why do of you think is. that is? Of course Why it is. Why are long-dated Treasury rates moving down instead of up? Well, ultimately, you have foreign investors who have continued to buy treasuries because there's a relative value proxy, which makes them more attractive. You also have the Federal Reserve, which is going to continue to buy through March as the earliest, which we recognize. So there are technical factors in this. Admittedly, when you have growth, though, and if you have real growth coming in at about 3.9 percent, which we project at PIMCO for next year, you will see those real rates move higher from the negative levels that they are right now. And more importantly, the longer rates that you're so concerned about this moment, Rick, are going to move, uh, move higher. The question is, how quickly and will there be volatility? We think that this is the exact purpose while, while, while being focused on defensive mechanisms in 2022. Investors should really be focused on these subtle changes, and it's going to create little bouts of uh, volatility. But at the same time, the Federal Reserve has been very vigilant and will continue to communicate to help alleviate some of those fears along the way.